created for yourself.
for coming. In case you guys don't know, my name's Dan Sperry, and I do magic tricks. Thanks for coming, Munich. Not mad about it. And right now, we are about to share with each other what's been called your most valuable possession, and that is your time. Because it's something that when given away, you can never get it back again. So thank you very much for coming, spending a little bit of your time with me this evening. I'll try not to waste it, but less talk and more rock. Are you guys ready for a good time? Yeah. Good. Sound yeah, good. <laughs> so, I should explain something before we go any further. You see, there are many different kinds of magic. There's sleight of hand magic, sleight of mind magic, and then there's an area of magic that not a lot of people like to talk about. And that's an area of magic that is known as voodoo magic. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Now by a show of hands, how many of you here tonight perhaps maybe believe in voodoo? Maybe you've seen it on TV, seen it on the internet, Read about it in books or magazines, anybody know or believe in voodoo? Couple people, okay, that's fine. Not everybody, but that's okay. Because perhaps by the end of this experiment that we are about to try, we will have turned some of you non-believers into believers. And in order to attempt this experiment, in order to have our own voodoo ceremony, I do need the assistance of one person to come up on stage and play a very important role. And that role is to make sure that everything I'm doing is exactly what I say it is. So right now is when I get to come out among all of you and try and find somebody to come up on stage and help with the magic job. Hmm. this lady that's eating popcorn and just having a rest. What's your name? Christina. Christina, everybody, this is Christina. Please give Christina a round of applause as she comes up on stage right this way, Christina. All the way up on stage, front and center, right there, perfect, don't move. Christina, this will take a moment. So first, I need you to cop a squat. Have a seat right there. Get comfortable. This will last just a little while. I'm going to borrow some of your time, okay? I hope you don't mind. Alles gut? Ah, super. Oh, ausgezeichnet. Okay. So, have we met before? Like, did you? Did anybody tell you you were going to come up on stage and perform voodoo? No. No. Good. Do you believe in voodoo? Not yet. Oh. That's fine. Because maybe, like I said, by the end of this experiment, we'll have turned you into a believer. You see, I've been reading about voodoo. I first got interested in voodoo magic when I went to an old bookshop. And I found this old leather book full of voodoo spells and curses. But when I opened the book to look inside, the pages were blank, empty, nothing, empty. It's because I did not believe. You must believe. Because only then do the spells and curses begin to reveal themselves inside the book. However, if you use the powers, the curses for evil, you will then be cursed. With blood! Blood! <laughs> okay, that's fucking dumb. That's stupid. Whatever. It's, it's dumb. It's stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> Anyways. Back to voodoo. Okay. You are about to play the very important role of a voodoo high priestess. You see, every ceremony must have a voodoo high priestess. That's you. All of us are going to be the voodoo villagers. Okay? So, as a voodoo high priestess, you need a few items for the ceremony. The first item 
that you need is your royal scepter, like a staff, a voodoo staff. And it just so happens I brought with me tonight an authentic, real voodoo high, high priestess scepter direct from New Orleans. <gasps> okay, whatever. I made this. It's bullshit. I made this. It's not from New Orleans. I made it. But it's kind of cool. It looks like voodoo, right? It's kind of cool. It has a little shrunken head. Voodoo shrunken head. Uh, Kleine Kampft? Yeah. Kind of. I don't know what I'm saying. But it's kind of that, right? Kleine Kampft? No? I'm not saying it right? Kleine Kopf. Yeah. Kleine Kopf. Yeah. <laughs> little shrunken head. It's also a rattle. Can you hear it? A rattle. There are little bones cursed and sealed inside the big bone. So you, with your right hand, grab it up at the top. Firm, strong, stark. Yeah? yeah? And then you shake it up and down so we can hear it. That helps in the musical portion of the voodoo ceremony. This musical portion is important because it will put you in a trance. You will send that trance, that energy, out among the villagers. And only then can we begin the rituals. Okay, get excited. It's voodoo, okay? So, you grab here, you try. Nice and loud so we can hear. Shake so we can hear. That's exactly how... No, okay. <laughs> okay, no, may, uh, maybe like this. Go like this. Das ist besser. Yeah. These are nick good. <laughs> nick good. Das ist besser. Okay. Yeah. Lieberstein. <laughs> Lieberstein. Okay. Okay, I'll just do it now. So, uh, the next thing, the next thing you need in a ceremony is something very important because you see every, every voodoo ceremony always has a sacrifice. Now, there are many different kinds of sacrifices that are used. The most common form of sacrifice is where they kill, sacrifice, kill a live chicken. But don't worry. Not allowed to use a live chicken anymore since the incident. So I have the next best thing, second option, second idea I have. Next best instead of not live chicken. Instead, I brought with me tonight this rubber chicken. Vegan, vegan voodoo, okay? It's like Hollywood stupid stuff, you know, the vegan voodoo. But it's fun because the rubber chicken, he has a, a kind of a honker a squeaker in his throat. So with your left hand, you grab him around the neck. I'm talking to you. You grab him around the neck. No, 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 not me. The chicken. So as you shake the rattle, you Squeak the chicken. You squeak the chicken the same time as you shake the rattle. This is the musical portion of the ceremony, which will put you, you go into the voodoo trance as you, you know, and then, and then we are ready to begin the rituals. Okay? Verstehen? Okay. It's going to be great. So up at the top, start, yeah? And when I say one, two, three, go, you go. Like, okay? Eins, zwei, drei, go! Shake the rattle, squeak, nein, yeah, yeah, squeak, shake, and squeak! Squeak, shake, squeak, make it squeak. Okay, S is kaput. What have you done? Okay, night moment. You broke it. I don't know. It's oh, oh, that was that you? Was that that was the chicken? You sure? You sure? Okay, night, 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 night moment. Um, it's uh, uh, Nick Luft uh, in in da because yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's okay. I'm a professional. I will fix it. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, it's fine, it's fine. I'll scoot now. I'm sorry you had to see that, but it's fine, it's fixed. It's just okay. Okay. So, no time more. Yeah. So, ready? One, two, three, go! Swing the chicken, shake the rattle! Both go, go under the trance. Do you feel the power? Do you feel the voodoo? Yeah? Good, you can stop. You can stop. She now feels the voodoo. So that means we are now ready to begin the ceremony. It wasn't me, one, two, three, not it. That's how we play. Just stop, we can get rid of this, this is stupid now. Okay. 
So, under the trance, that goes out among all of the villagers now. We are ready to begin with the rituals. There are many rituals performed within a voodoo ceremony. The most common ritual is where the high priestess and the villagers often take needles, skewers, and stick them through their flesh, in their skin, piercing themselves all over their bodies. They will even oftentimes take knives and daggers and cut themselves open with big gaping wounds. The weird thing is, no matter how many piercings, no matter how many cuts, they will not bleed. They then parade around the voodoo village. They do this to ward off and send away evil spirits. That's what we're gonna do right now, okay? First, you are also here because you're a normal person, normal person, yeah. So you have to examine a few items for these rituals to make sure that they are real. First item you will look at is merely this blindfold. Now I could wear this and put this on my face and say, oh, it's, it's a blindfold, I can't see, I can't see. But who's gonna believe me? You, normal person, kind of, they'll believe you. So for a few minutes, just for a few more, I'm gonna place this over your eyes, fasten it gently behind your head with some Velcro, Velcro, okay? You can adjust to be comfortable, okay? I don't want any hair getting in your eyes or anything, okay? So, uh, it's all good. And we watch this after every show. So, that's just okay. You're not gonna get pink eye or herpes or anything like that, I promise. So, okay? Comfortable? No? Wait, what? Okay. Is, it's okay? Yeah, it's okay now? Now, yes or no, is this real? Can you see? No. no. Good. Maybe some light comes in because it's not your special blindfold like from home, so this is more... I mean, I don't know, but you understand. But yes, it's real or no? Yes. It is real, perfect. You get to wear that for the next few moments. Now, please place your feet on the ground in front. Hands here, turn over, palm up. Good. Now, are you right-handed or are you left-handed? Le really? A lefty? We found one. They're real. That's okay. We start with your left hand, your left arm, the dominant one, because that is how these rituals begin. What I'm about to do is place something on each arm. Hold here. It will be cold, wet. It's fine. Shut up. But. <laughs> it's just an alcohol swab, like at the doctor, you know, alcohol, because it is said that every voodoo high priestess must be pure. And I don't know you, and I don't know where you've been, and so this is how we make you pure. And I'm not judging you, but I'm judging you. So same here. Now you sit all the way over there. Who are you here with? Who did you come with? Friend? Husband, and do you trust your husband? Yeah. yeah, okay, good. Didn't didn't hesitate. You're doing good, dude. Good job. What's his name? Martin. Martin. Martin, please come to the edge of the stairs, please. Or the edge of the stage, please. <laughs> Hurry up. Did he leave? Oh, he's here. He's still here. It's okay. He's still here. Bitte da. Yeah. Relax. Good. Martin. You are going to examine these next few items because she has a blindfold she can't see, so we trust you now, okay? You may know what these are, or you may not. Either way, it doesn't matter. I just want you to honest, honestly answer what I'm about to ask you. These are gloves. This is not what you're, you're looking at this like you're freaked out because I put the gloves on. Don't worry, it's not probably what you think. Instead, what you will examine are these two stainless steel Seven inch, nine inch long <laughs> needles, metric system to American, I don't know. So, 
Uh, these are stainless medical, uh, stainless steel medical needles. They are fragile, so please do not bend and snap them. But please examine, make sure they are solid. They do not break. They do not come apart and go back together. The ends are sharp and pointy. Yes. You, yes? Perfect. Thank you. You can have a seat. We trust Martin. He did a good job. Thank you, Martin. Clap, clap, clap. Yeah. And your hands, your hands are clean, right? Martin, your hands are clean. Should have asked before we hit into alcohol, but whatever. Okay, so, as you can see, long, solid, real hypodermic medical needles, sharp on the... Ooh, ooh. Shit. Voice. Oh, I see it, I see it, I see it. It's okay, it's just okay. Five second rule, it's fine. Five second rule, found it. gentle now like I said we are now going to recreate those same rituals performed in the voodoo ceremony you're supposed to be in the voodoo trance go to bed where the voodoo practitioners oftentimes take needles and skewers and stick them through their flesh creating a sort of human voodoo doll but you are under the voodoo trance right so you should not feel anything you feel, okay okay so maybe you feel uh something small but it's just okay it'll last merely a moment hold here just like that perfect relax you may feel just small sting or pressure as it goes through but that lasts only for a moment okay you can relax here good just don't make don't squeeze don't make a tight fist because then the blood squirts everywhere and you're wearing a white shirt, so this is that. Okay, so hold. Perfect, right there, good. That's number one. Number two, same thing. Just lift your arm, I take this now. Relax. You may feel just a small sting or pressure. But that will last only a moment. Up, there, perfect. Number two, excellent. Now again, you are here to examine everything to verify to the audience that what we're doing is real. So in a moment, I'm going to remove the blindfold. When I do this, I want you to take a peek at each of your arms and verify yes or no. Do these needles appear to be inside your skin? Yep, 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 okay, yep, yep. That's a yes. We'll just go back to voodoo night, 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 night. Okay, okay, this is okay, relax. Stay right there. <laughs> she said yes, ish, yes. So, now this is where all of you get a chance to see as well. So only this arm, only this. For everybody on this side, we open only this one. So you can see it actually going through her skin. But just like those voodoo practitioners, no holes, no scars, no blood. Give her a round of applause. You can, you can rest, you can rest. Good, that's number one. Number two, same thing for everybody on this side. You get a chance to look as well and you should be able to see the needle actually going through her skin. Just, oh, it's stuck, hold on, moment, it's stuck, I get it. Shit, hold on, nope, it's stuck. It's okay. <laughs> no holes, no scars. Little bit of blood, but that's okay. She's never done voodoo. Uh, moment, don't move, don't move, stay there. Uh, here, I, um, I'll wipe it off because, oh God, no, it's just getting... Shit. It's okay, I fixed it. It's okay. Just sit still, relax, I fixed it. It's okay, so. No, oh, your hand is cold, it's cold. Don't do that, don't do this. Relax. That was weird. But no holes, no scars, no blood. Please give her a big round of applause. You're excellent. Doing good. Doing good. Perfect. Now, I just take this off for a moment. Just for a moment. Real blindfold. You're doing great. We are now ready to come full circle. This is where we now bring this stereotypical ceremonial Voodoo doll, the real uh, kleine uh, doll. 
What? Pope. Pope? Pope. 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 You're lying. No. Now, okay, because that means something different uh, in English. Okay, all right. Okay, because, okay. Plan a Pope. A real voodoo Pope that I brought with me tonight, direct from New Orleans. The real voodoo doll. He's on a delayed flight. Here he is. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Real voodoo doll. Okay, I made this too. It's a lie. I made this. Not real. I made it. I have a lot of time to myself. I don't have any friends, so I make my own. We have little tea parties. We make out. It's a lot of fun. He knows. So. Now to put power into the doll, to put the power of voodoo, yo, to put the power of voodoo into the doll, you must have hair from the voodoo high priestess. Yeah, no, 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 uh, don't worry. I don't take locks of girls' hair anymore. It was a weird phase when I was in gymnasium. I don't do that anymore. I grew up now, I'm over it. So instead, I will only take one strand, Ina strand from the back of your head. It's gonna be fine. Perfect. It was a split end, it was dead. It's going anyway, it's gonna fall out. I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> so, if I place it into the doll, do you feel the power? Y yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Voodoo, all right. This is good. Because, as legend says, now anything that happens to the doll happens to you. Yeah, we will test this with a little feather that I have right here and the bottom of the doll's feet. In a moment, I will tickle the bottom of the doll's feet. Okay, in a moment I tickle this. When I tickle the feet, you let us know if you feel it, okay? Yeah. You feel it? Nine? Okay. That's fine. When you are too deep in the voodoo trance, like she is, something simple tickling feet, not strong enough. So instead of feet, we need to move to a different area on the doll. And instead of a feather, again, something stronger. We had better luck with the needles. So now, grossa needle. So when this needle makes contact with the uh, Papa Popo, is that right? <laughs> Papa Popo? <laughs> is that right? What are you looking at? I want you to let us know if you feel, if you feel anything, okay? okay? When this touches the doll, you let us know. Yes. It's not there yet. <laughs> Bullshit artist, there's nothing happening. <laughs> it's not even there, I haven't touched the doll. But anything at all, you just let us know if you feel anything. <laughs> you felt that for real? You did? Yeah? Then I think we'll stop right about there. Please give our Voodoo High Priestess a big round of applause. You were excellent. The Voodoo High Priestess, she was great. Could have been one of you. Thanks, you were good. All right, let me make sure you get down, okay? Just remember to use your powers for good so you are not cursed with the blood. <laughs> now, sometimes people wonder. When they see the voodoo, they wonder. Maybe that was not real. Maybe I sort of, maybe I hypnotized her to feel something. Maybe I was using subliminal words to convince her mind, in the back of her mind, that she was experiencing something that she wasn't, that's not true. But that idea has always interested me. So instead right now of me having somebody come up on stage for this next experiment, I want to try it with all of you out there. Something that we can do together. Because no matter how old we are, 
or where we come from, we all share one thing in common, and that's a fear, a phobia. So I wanted to combine this idea of subliminal messages with a phobia. The most common phobia that people have, the most common fear, is a fear of insects, bugs, like spiders, with arachnophobia, you know. So what I'm about to do right now is play a simple video on each of these screens. All it is is a black and white circle animation. I want you to relax and watch this animation for a little bit. What your eyes will see is only the animation. What your mind will see are little frames of a beetle, a spider, and a cockroach crawling across the screen. Then I will count back from three to two to one. When I get to one, we will turn on all the lights in the room. And that's where I want all of you to take a look at your hands and your arms. <laughs> and hopefully you will see what appears to be bugs, insects, crawling, not on your skin, but under your skin. Get excited. If you are on this side of the room, watch this screen here. Focus your eyes on that center dot. If you are on this side of the room, Focus on this screen with your eyes on this center dot. Just breathe in and back out and relax. Relax your eyes, relax your mind. If you have long sleeves, roll them up so you can see your arms. Just You might see the little bugs if you do, that's okay. Hopefully it will still work. There has already been one that went across the screen. Almost halfway done. If you're getting dizzy and you feel nauseous, like you're going to vomit or throw up, just turn your head and give it to your neighbor as a present. The gift that keeps on giving. Almost done. That was the second one. We are almost at the last animation. Perfect. Relax. Three. Two. One. We turn on the lights. Everybody look at your hands. Look at your arms. It should look like... Your skin is boiling, crawling with insects and bugs beneath your skin. Raise your hand if it worked for you. Did it work for some people? Good. This is good. This is good. Yeah. Excellent. If it did not work, that is okay. If it did not work, that is okay. Because we can try it again. But first, we must... Uh, pump nitrous oxide gas into the room to maybe help the hallucination. <laughs> we pump it into the theater. We're about to have a good time because it's about to get even weirder. Projection of vanity, a quiet 
So after the show, when I'm out in the lobby, every time this happens when I'm done with a show, every time, when I'm out in the lobby saying hi to people, I always get asked the same questions. People come up to me and they say, oh, that was so neat. How did you do that? How did you learn magic tricks? How did you get started doing your little magic tricks? Where are you from and why do you look like that? What's your problem? <laughs> Things like that. So I decided I will answer those questions right now so we can just get it out of the way, move on and forget about it. So I started doing magic tricks when I was a little kid. And I'm, I'm not from Germany, obviously. I'm from uh, USA, in northern USA, in a place called Minnesota. Anybody know? Any, but no, no, nobody knows Minnesota. Okay, great, this is fine. In Minnesota, we have four seasons. I don't live there anymore, but I miss being there because we have all four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. My favorite season is fall, autumn, herbst. Not because of the leaves changing and falling off the trees. Not because of going back to school. Not because of pumpkin spice lattes or any of that white girl stuff. But because it was always time for my favorite holiday, which was Halloween. No way! Yeah, surprise! Shocker. But the thing about Halloween in Minnesota is that it is not uncommon for there to be below zero temperatures. Sehr kalt. Oder, or, oder uh, große Schnee. Blizzards. On October 31st, on Halloween, it can be very cold. So every year, you're always so excited to go trick-or-treating. If you're a boy, maybe as an army man, like G.I. Joe. If you're a girl, maybe like Barbie or a princess. Oh, but one year, uh, a lot of years actually, I, I had to go as both at the same time because I had older brothers and sisters, so I had to wear their leftovers. So if you have little kids, don't do that because look what happens. Now, this is my life. This is my life. This is my life. This is my life. Did it get weird? It got weird. Okay, it got weird. Um, but there was one year when I was five years old, so excited to go trick-or-treating, except it was too cold outside, and my mother made me stay home and hand out candy. I know, I know, I know, I know. What? A, a, a bless, blessing in disguise. It was a blessing in disguise. Because that year, when I stayed home, that was the year there was a man and you probably heard about him because he made news all over the world. On Halloween, there was a man in my neighborhood who was taking apples, sticking razor blades in them, and then handing them out to all the little kids coming to his door on Halloween. You remember hearing about that guy? It's, it's a true story. I know because it was me putting the razor blades in the apples. Because I had to stay home. I was angry. I had a problem back then. Still do. And that's why you cannot hand out apples on Halloween. It's, it's, it's against the rules now. They don't let you do that. So instead, I brought with tonight a very special apple. However, this one uh, might be a little obvious where the razor blades are in this one. They're kind of in, in this area. I did not hide them very well this time, but you can see. So when I show this to people, they think maybe these razor blades are not real. Maybe they're fake, made out of plastic, aluminum foil, gum wrappers. You get crazy thoughts, ideas, and theories. So I need someone <laughs> to authenticate them and make sure that they are real, like you. Yeah, be eyes and Z. Peter, please stand up right here. Peter. Do you know razor blades? You familiar? No, I thought so. That's why I picked you, because you look like you know it. What? Oh, no, this is an itch. I'm not saying. It's upper lip sweat, this one. So, Peter, what I need you to do, take a finger, put it up in the air, so everybody can see. Up in the air. Yeah, but I'm over here. Yeah, there, you, don't, you don't need to look at them. Peter, Peter. 
So, and good, thank you for the finger, this one. In, in the USA, I get this one all the time, so this is nice. Yeah, okay, this is good, all is good. Peter, please very gently, very gently check each blade like this. Make sure they are 100% authentic, okay? Just, I must tell you, do not slide your finger. Yeah, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. I don't think I have to say why, Zieverstein, don't do that, okay? But you never know. Okay, so Peter, please be gentle as you touch. Make sure everybody can see as well they are real. I don't want you to accidentally, like, yes. you know, check them out. I don't want you to, like, cut yourself or anything. Like, <laughs> I'm a dick, I'm a dick, I'm a dick, I'm a dick. Okay, but check them out. The apple is fake because I do not feel like buying. Yeah, it's fake. I just said that, dude. Uh, because I do not feel like buying a real apple every time. Well, done. Yes. Is it okay? Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Shin. Yeah, everybody, Peter, cool guy for helping out. Thanks, man. Yeah, Peter, Peter, dirty finger. Okay, so Peter says they are real. This is good. But maybe you did not get a good look at that because he's down here in front. So I also have a, a small piece of paper, Klein up a beer, that I'm going to cut into little pieces with each razor blade so you can see exactly how sharp they are. Because since I cannot hand out apples with razor blades in them for all the little trick-or-treaters to eat, I save them for me, and I eat them instead. Thank <laughs> you. 
just a key. So that's why right now we're going to take a 20 minute intermission. <laughs> 